time for your IPMA Tip of the Week, where we teach pavement managers just like you how to do more with less. Here's your host, Blair Barnhart. Hey everyone, this is Blair Barnhart, founder and executive director of the International Pavement Management Association and the creator of IPMA Academy, where we teach agency engineers just like you how to do more with less while increasing your authority, expertise, and income. Today's tip of the week, brought to you by our uh, charter members and the industry supporters, this is Blair's thoughts, nothing to do with the IPMA Advisory Board, um, and, and I've just got to get out on a bit of a rant here and get this off my chest because people ask me, Blair, your vision with IPMA and the IPMA Academy is that you can save America $100 trillion over the next decade and donate up to $42 billion back into charity. And a lot of times agency engineers will ask me, well, how the heck is that going to happen? That's a pretty big vision. And here's what I've learned that We've got to think big, otherwise change will never happen. But guess what? Even if only 1% of the vision comes true, we're still gonna save America $1 trillion. That's with a T. Now, you might think I need to be locked up and have a straight jacket put on, but even if only 1% of that vision comes to fruition over the next decade, we'll still save this great country $1 trillion and donate up to 500 million back into charity. People ask, Blair, how, how does that work? Uh, it's all through collaborative compounding, and I don't want to get into that right now. I've got another video that explains that if you're interested. But today's tip of the week is, my gosh, if you've got an interstate, you don't have to dig it all up and haul it all away into a, a off-site location and use all those trucks and milling machines and all that stuff. As far as I can tell, and I'm not the brightest light bulb in the fridge, but I have been in construction for over three decades, and I've heard of these machines called uh, concrete rubilizers. They'll go in and rubilize the concrete. I think we've got a couple of them in America here. And they usually like to work on large projects, but when I look at 20 or 30 miles of interstate, uh, that's a pretty large project in my mind, uh, especially when you both sides of the road here. So I'll run it through a couple of quick figures here. Again, today's at my tip of the week. This is Blair Barnhart's uh, ideas and thoughts. This is really no reflection of the advisory board or any of the uh, colleagues or the universities that I teach with. So you take 10 miles, just a simple 10 mile formulation here times 5280 times 2, 48 feet wide. We've got prob probably even more than that with these paved shoulders. And I did a little bit of uh, homework here. I just crawled all over the job site here on a Saturday morning for you. And again, this is not, no, this is, I'm not meaning to be condescending or uh, mean to any state agency or anything like that. Maybe this was in the design process for the last 12 years for all I know. And by the way, a disclaimer here, I'm not here to promote anyone's product service or vendor or anything. And, and, and furthermore, if this has got something to do with homeland security and we have to rebuild this section to a certain specification, I apologize. I understand there's no bridges out here and this is a pretty nice stretch to land airplanes and stuff on. But if this is merely a design that was done 12 or 15 years ago and we're just sticking to our guns and doing it that way because we designed it that way and we're not looking at other options of in place rehabilitation methods, then just te tears my heart out to think of the billions of dollars and, and onwards of trillions over the next couple of decades of money that we're going to waste doing this this kind of stuff. So you come up with 563,200 square yards, If you, even if it's eight inches, very modest eight inches of depth, but it's even more than that, I can clearly tell here from the pavement section that's in place. 
that's a 495 million t uh, pounds, 247,808 tons of wrap, or in this case, uh, a blend of recycled asphalt, concrete and recycled asphalt uh, millings. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to go ahead and say it was wasted because clearly it looks like they're putting a little bit of aggregate back into the concrete. Perhaps they're taking that hot mix asphalt and paving some of the county roads. I don't know enough about the project and I really, I don't want to start digging into all the details. This is just one example that I see as I drive a thousand miles a day with driving America for Better Roads. I see this waste in every state pretty much. Um, and for those of you who are recycling in place like Virginia DOT and the likes of that, and Nevada DOT, Caltran, I'm here to tell you, Alaska DOT, this works. It really does work and it's worked for several decades. So there's no need to reinvent the wheel or look for specifications or test sites or anything like that. Um, you don't have to rebuild this whole thing. It's already in place. The vehicle's there for you to just get out here, uh, put this out to bid, get some rubilization done. Could have been soil cement stabilized down below if there's base sub failures, and we could have actually taken the millings here and turned that into a cold central plant recycled asphalt product that could have come back out on the job site, much like the I-81 project, that award-winning roads and bridges job in Virginia DOT. And then at that point, we could have come back out and put a super pave on top or even a, a white topping, something like that. But my point here is that what I'm seeing is several tens of millions of dollars being wasted on one project alone. So if you have a look around here, we got a Cat 345, a D8 dozer, uh, you know, 10 or 20 haulers getting this material out of here and onto the stockpile location and then comes back out here in the form of, uh, in this case, it's concrete pavement. And I have nothing against concrete pavement or asphalt pavement. I'm not here to promote one or the other. As far as I'm concerned, you guys should stop infighting with each other and look to uh, join up together and talk about pavement preservation as a whole, whether it's concrete rehabilitation or asphalt rehabilitation. And that's a whole nother story for another day. Had we preserved this pavement from day one, we probably wouldn't be out here even having this conversation. So You think about how many truckloads it took to get there and all the fossil fuels it took to burn the, uh, well, produce the diesel fuel and, and, and then make those uh, trucks run back and forth all day. The milling machines burning 48 or 50 gallons of diesel fuel an hour to get the asphalt milled up. Um, she, again, I'm not a I'm not an expert at rubilization, but I, I have been in construction long enough to know that I've seen it happen on several highways that I drive by. Could we not have rubilized this road in place, uh, even if we had stripped the asphalt off, then brought it back as a cold central plant mix to mitigate some of the cracks, and then perhaps we could have put a, a six inch concrete uh, overlay on top of that. But in any case, this Blair Barnhart, with your tip of the week, rubilize in place, stabilize in place, recycle in place. Only 3% of our roads in America are actually recycled in place. It's quite a travesty when you think about it. And if you could help me spread this message, we can save this country hundreds of trillions of dollars over the next uh, you know, three, four decades uh, and just stop the insanity here. Let's stop digging stuff out. So everybody raise their right hand and say after me, I promise, Blair, I will never, ever dig up an interstate or a local agency road and haul it all away when I could be recycling or rehabilitating it in place with one of the tools in the toolbox. This is Blair Barnhart. Thanks for joining us. Any questions, feel free to email me at Blair at itma.co. And for you rubilization contractors, if I've spoken at a line here or something, uh, let me know. And if it's Homeland Security issue, I apologize. But uh, if this was an interstate section where we had bridges and we were doing this very technique and it wasn't about Homeland Security, then that's a, that's a shame. So Blair Barnhart signing off uh, here from Interstate Avenue anywhere in America. Thanks for joining us.